your tongue. He shoot you in the mouth with a big shot. Numb your mouth. Numb you right in the butt. Hey, I went to the dentist. I don't care. You need to go again. Yeah, you won't thank me. I need to go again and get shot full of nerve cancer so you won't open your mouth. Hi everyone, I'm here at the Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to be reading Acts chapter 9, only verses 1 through 25, Psalm 131, and Proverbs chapter 17, verses 4 and 5. Sorry about that at the beginning. Sherman and I were having a discussion about the dentist. We're not going to the dentist! He needs to go. So do you! Yeah, but you won't take it. I know you won't take it. Wow. Good luck. Okay, so we'll be, oh, this is a good one. Take a hoy. We'll be talking about Saul's conversion. Hoy, matey. You know what? I can't do that. Yeah. I get sick. Oh, well, I go. It's hard for me to ride with people because of my stomach disease. I get sick really easy in the car. I've always been that way. Okay, I'm going to read now. What does that have to do with me? Sit down. Are you going to follow along or what? So we'll be talking about Saul's conversion. Paul used to be Saul. He was a mean guy. And then we'll be talking about Saul and Damascus in Jerusalem. Okay, so let's begin. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, now listen to this, this is what happened to Paul. His name was Saul then. As you see, he was like a soldier. And he wanted these people arrested. He wanted them killed. The disciples of Jesus. So, and there was people with him when he was on the road. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a white, or sorry, a light from heaven flashed around him. It was like covered in white light. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what, must, what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could not see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, Saul was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Jesus made him blind on purpose, and you'll see why. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarshish named Saul. And Ananias knew who this was. For he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here 
has sent me so that you may be able to see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. And let me tell you, Saul started preaching right away. A lot of the disciples didn't trust him at first because they knew who he was. But Ananias kept telling him and they kept seeing Paul preach and, you know, one and then they finally realized it. he's changed. The Lord has changed him. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? On the name Jesus, on this name. Remember, Saul was right there, maybe even throwing rocks himself at the disciple Stephen, who'd done nothing wrong, but was teaching about Jesus. And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus, but proving by Jesus, but proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him, to kill Paul. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. And what for? Because they think he's, you know, sneaking around pretending to be a Christian, or they want to kill him because he is a Christian now, and spreading the word of Jesus' name. But his followers, his disciples, his other brothers' disciples, but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. So he got away. People always wanted to kill the disciples, just like they always wanted to kill Jesus. Do you think if they would kill the Son of God, they wouldn't kill the disciples as well? Most of the disciples were killed in their old age in not very good ways. We know how Peter was crucified. He was crucified and upside down. That was his choice, to be upside down. And he was old when that happened. Okay, but that's where we're stopping with Acts today. And now we're going to read a really short psalm with three verses. Psalm 131, a psalm of assets of David. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted myself I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. And that was a little short song of David, but a beautiful song of Ascents. I don't know one song that is, I love the songs. Okay, and now we're going to finish up today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 17, verses 4 and 5. A wicked person listens to deceitful lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. Whoever mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. You know, like some people something, uh, like let's say, a neighbor they don't like or whatever, their house catches on fire, they lose their home and everything in it, but but you're laughing about it, you think it's funny, now they're going to be out of here, we don't want to worry about them no more, you know, that's not the right thing to do, that's not nice at all, and God doesn't like that, and something bad happens to them, maybe nobody will come to their aid and help them, maybe they'll be laughing. 
not know what the future holds. So true. The bad people, the wicked people that listen to deceitful lips and they gang up together. And a lot of teenagers. It's crazy. It's crazy the things that people can and will do to one another. And sometimes for the stupidest reasons. It's really heartbreaking. Everybody should be nice and kind to one another. Because you are brothers and sisters. All of us, no matter what color we are, no matter what size we are, no matter what nationality we are, we're all brothers and sisters. If you are saved through Jesus, you are our brother and our sister. And we should act that way to one another. Because what, what does Jesus say? Jesus says what you, how you act to them, like if you're mean to the poor or good to the poor, you're nice to this person, mean to that one. He said, what you do to them, you are doing the same to me. So when you see that person you're yelling at or acting mean to, picture Jesus standing there instead of that person. And know that you're like saying that to Jesus. And if you're sad and ashamed and angry with yourself, say, I wouldn't say that to Jesus. You know you're wrong, and you shouldn't say it to that person either. Because Jesus says that. If you do something to someone, whether it's good or bad, it's like you doing that for him. So remember that. Remember that. Okay, guys, so let me get to the prayer request, and we'll be done today. Again, <clears throat> I want to remind you guys that um, Heather... Whitting. I really spell her last name, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I pronounce it Whitting. It's W-H-I-T-I-N-G. And um, she had breast cancer before, and they found out that she has cancer, like pretty much all three of her now. It's in her spine and everywhere. She's got to be in pain. But um, stage four terminal cancer, she will pass away. But we don't know when. That's God's choice of when to send her back home but she's got two two kids two boys so please keep her in your prayers and her kids and family and friends gosh by looking at her she does not look that old maybe our age maybe because her kids don't look you know that old but please pray for her they got a page for her on facebook i think heather Whitting. They're supposed to have a benefit. I can't remember if they had it this month or it's going to be next month. Because if it's next month, I'd like to go. <clears throat> Some of you guys might want to if you're from around here. I'll try to find out and see if we missed it or not. Please pray for my mom, Rhonda Karshner. Pat Dempsey. Pat is getting better and better every day. She's pretty much not sick anymore right now. Please pray for Sherm. He's having a lot of pain in his chest and back. And I'm afraid of it being, you know, COVID coming back or pneumonia or something. Because I know how hard it was for me to try to breathe when I had it. I had COVID and pneumonia. So please pray he's not getting that. And it's just a pulled muscle or something. Please pray for Cindy and Jim Welsh. Pray that Cindy don't get no more cramps in her legs. She gets Charlie horses really, really bad. Please pray for Dora Parker, Layla and her son and Mill, Danette Rager, the Burt family. The Burt family, um, they're our cousins. And remember I told you that my cousin lost her daughter to COVID, I believe in November. And uh, her name was Amanda. She was only 30 years old. And the other day was her birthday, her first birthday since this happened. It had to be a really hard thing for them. Like every day's hard, but that'd be extra, you know. Should have been 31. Please pray for Lori, who lost her husband, Garnet Boyer. She turned 80 yesterday. She had a birthday party. 
please pray for Dean Daddy. He'll be getting his um, blood, blood, mar blood marrow, bone marrow. But it's like blood and all that stuff mixed together. I've seen him give it before. Um, he's going to be getting that very soon. And they're going to have to play with very strong chemo with it as well. And he's going to have to remain in the hospital for 100 days. And then when he goes home, he's going to have to have you know, a lot of help. You know that, sure? He's going to be in the hospital 100 days. I wonder why that is. It's weird, but please pray that it works. They said it could give him an extra couple of years on his life. He's our cousin as well. Please pray for Dad, or Randy and Jody Post. That's my dad and stepmom. Please pray for Abby and Jimmy Myers. I have not heard from Abby. I keep trying. I keep messaging her. I'm messaging her, but she won't write me back. I don't know if something happened to her, that's what I'm afraid of, or if she just don't want to talk to me. So please pray that she's okay and that her health is doing better because she had COVID and very bad strep throat. Abby, Jimmy, and Cheryl always get strep throat. I never have, but they do. And please pray for Elizabeth Jeffries. Ha ha, I heard from her yesterday, guys, finally. She doesn't live here right now. I don't know if she moved out permanently or not, but she's in the nursing home right up the road. And we did not know, but I got a letter from her yesterday. And I'm like, she's in the nursing home. We thought she was still up there, and I kept putting stuff up there, you know, for her. And nobody said anything, but somebody must have told her because she wrote to us. So I want to go up there and visit her. But that is um, everything for our prayer request as well. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.